Hey guys, it's Marshall from Going Gear. Today we're going to take a look at another new light from Night Eye. This one's the i12. So you can see the packaging on it, pretty standard stuff. Has the ANSI specs on the front, other kind of stuff on the back. Let's go ahead and pull out all the stuff that you have on the inside. Warranty information, user manual. Always take a look at those because you will discover functions that you didn't know about. <laughs> which I'm really bad about doing in the middle of a video. Here's the light. I'm going to set that to the side for just a second. Here's the holster and the other accessories. Should be stuffed down in there. That's usually what they do. Yep, there they are. All right, so the other stuff that you get in there, a couple of things. Really nice pocket clip. So they have really nice pocket clips on these and they attach using a uh, little Allen wrench and a couple little screws. Whoops. So since it is a nice pocket clip, I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick just so you can see what that looks like. I was just gonna do all of it off camera since attaching something's pretty boring and <laughs> it might take a little while. So I have horrible hand-eye coordination. But uh, you can see you got two holes here, two threaded holes right here. You just line those up and then use the two screws to attach it. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do right now. Okay, so I have the pocket clip attached. Nice sturdy pocket clip. Good flex to it, but not so much that it's not gonna hold securely to your pocket. You can see it goes back into place really easily. Nice and secure on there. I never bother putting Loctite on my lights, but uh, I'm pretty nice to them. So if you're kind of a rough user, definitely put a little bit of Loctite on those, on the threads of these, uh, on these two little screws, just so it helps keep them in place. So the other stuff you get in there, a couple of spare O-rings, spare tail cover cap, if you ever happen to need those. Okay, I've zoomed out a bit so you can see the holster a little bit better. So we're gonna go and slide the light in. You can slide the light in either way, whatever you prefer. Hook and loop closure, so it holds it in there nice and tight protection on the top and the bottom and then standard attachment points on the back so you have the hook and loop and then another point there and then you got a carabiner or rope or whatever however you want to attach it there standard holster but it's nice it's a little bit heavier than you'll see from a lot of the other manufacturers as far as the uh, thickness of the nylon so nice heavyweight durable holster so here is the light itself we'll zoom in closer again just so you can see the details and everything so there's the bezel there is your Cree XML LED, if I can get my camera to focus. I think I'm a little too, a little too close. There you go. So Cree XML LED, orange peel reflector, so it's going to smooth it out nice and evenly. you got this nice stainless steel bezel up here, so if you drop it, it's going to protect the light really well. This ring right here blends in really well, but uh, that's actually how you adjust the outputs of the light. And I'll show you that better, of course, when we put some batteries in here. Flip that around so you can see. There's the uh, information about the company, flip it back around, and this is their high-end series. Although I don't think they make crappy lights. I haven't seen any, so all their stuff is high-end. This is the i12. Switch on the end, you can see it's exposed pretty well. It's going to be really easy to activate. And the tail cap, just take that off, that's how you put the batteries in. So great anodizing, great machining. Like I said in previous videos, these guys have been making uh, flashlights and designing flashlights for other companies for a while. You can see. They already have expertise, or a lot of expertise, so they're doing their own stuff now. Okay, the light is powered by two AA batteries. So you can use alkalines. I always say do not use alkalines if you can get away with it. If that's all you have access to, I guess that's fine. But uh, alkalines do have the possibility of leaking in your flashlight. When you're talking about most of the flashlights we sell, you know, our average flashlight is probably 80 or 100 bucks. You know, it's not something you want to have flashlight or your batteries leak in because they'll ruin the flashlight, and that's not something that's going to be covered by the warranty. You may get the battery manufacturer to cover it, but the flashlight manufacturer is not going to cover it. And most battery manufacturers won't even cover that, especially not in high-end lights like this. They may be uh, willing to reimburse you for a $20 light, but a $100 light? <laughs> that might be a little more difficult. So anyway, use nickel metal hydride because they are uh, pretty easy to find. The overall cost of ownership is really low. You get great runtime, great output. So get some San Yuana loops or Duracell rechargeables or something like that. So interface on this guy, it's actually turned into an output where it's uh, actually gonna turn on. <laughs> all right, so switch on the end, lightly press it. You have momentary activation, click it all the way for constant on, and then you have this ring that adjusts between your different outputs. And you can see all the way to the left is off, and then you actually have a few detents before it starts activating, but you can see the first one is super, super low. Very minimal output, you can see in a fully lit room, that is on, but it's not even lighting up my hand at all. But uh, up close kind of work, it's not too bad for that. 
The next one up is probably the most usable of the couple of the lower ones. And then of course it gets just brighter and brighter and brighter. So nice interface on this. It does actually have some flashing modes as well. So the way to activate those, if you've seen the i10, it's the same way to activate those. So go one, two, and it'll go into strobe. And then uh, one, two, three, it'll go into SOS. And I'm not going all the way over, you just have to go a few clicks over and then back to max output. And that's how you get to the hidden modes. So you can see I've got it turned all the way to max and then go one, two, and it'll go into strobe. And then do it three times and it'll go into SOS. It's a nice simple interface. These kind of lights are great gifts for people. I've said that before because you have the switch on the end and then the rotary ring adjusts the output. It's pretty easy to grasp for most people. You know, a lot of technologically averse people, they get some of our flashlights and they're programmable and you have this like long menu of stuff that you can choose between and that can be totally overwhelming. So for somebody that doesn't want something like that, these kind of lights are great because they're uh, easy to be able to uh, use the interface and everything or the interfaces are easy to use. I need to quit making videos at 1 a.m. <laughs> My speaking skills just go to crap. So anyway, nice interface on this. I like the lights a lot. It has a good feel to it, good look, nice sturdy pocket clip, good holster, all around just a great light. And powered by AA batteries, the easiest batteries to find in the world. So if you're in a place where lithium ion batteries are hard to find, or if you're international and you know people like us uh, charge you an arm and a leg to ship lithium batteries thanks to the new postal regulations, um, this is a great option, I mean, because you can still get a really solid output, relatively compact size, and batteries that you can find anywhere. So, this is the i12. We're going to go ahead and take it outside, and we'll show you how the i12 does outside. All right, we got that i12 outside. Got the big 40 mag light that I always use. We're going to use the 40 mag light first, and then I'll show you how the i12 works. So, let's go ahead and try out that uh, 40 mag light. Little bush at 15 feet, tree out there at 100 feet. Same as it was the last 400 times. <laughs> All right, let's try out the i12. Make sure the switch is actually on. And there you go. So that's it on high. I'll cycle through the different outputs. Actually, let's tilt the camera down just so you can see. Definitely a usable amount of light on low and you can quickly get to the higher outputs, which I really like about this. And out at 100 feet, that's definitely a usable amount of light. It's not gonna be a super thrower. It's not gonna go a huge distance past 100 feet. But out at 100 feet, you can say, see a really wide hotspot, really large hotspot, and definitely a large amount of usable spill, which is the area around the hotspot, around that. Um, so definitely a usable amount of light coming out of this thing. Very useful beam, and very common, easy to find batteries. So there you go. That is the Night Eye i12. If you like it, you can buy it from us at goinggear.com. Any questions or comments, you can reach us in the comments or at goinggear.com. And if you liked the video, be sure to subscribe. We put out a lot of flashlight and other gear videos. Thanks for watching.